In today's video, I'm going to talk about five ways to keep your makeup from moving into your fine lines and wrinkles. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Mini Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. So I decided to do this video because I had a viewer last week, maybe the week before, put in the comment section that no matter what she tried, her foundation still continued to move into her fine lines and wrinkles, and what would I recommend? I'm going to give you five tips to help with your foundation from moving. However, they may not all work. They may not work depending on your skin type. Our facial muscles move, our makeup moves, but hopefully these tips will really help eliminate the problem or at least make it really less noticeable. So the first tip is all about your skin prep and you really need to pay attention to your skin prep. So you may be using too many products too soon before you're applying your makeup. So if you're doing, you know, your serums, your actives, your moisturizer, your sunscreen, and then you're going right in and doing a primer or a moisturizing primer and a foundation, that might just be too many layers of moisture and they may not all play well together either. And so when you put your foundation on, it is really just slipping and sliding because all of these other ingredients um, have not fully absorbed into your skin, especially sunscreen, right? Because sunscreen is meant to stay on top of the skin to provide that block, and especially if you're using physical sunscreens, I should say. Now, I use a chemical sunscreen usually right under my makeup if I am going to go outside and spend any time outside. Many of you know that if I'm going to be indoors, I don't put sunscreen on at all. Uh, but for outdoors, I like the Universal Tinted Moisturizer from Dermatology. I've talked about this for years. This is zinc oxide and oxtenoxate, which some people question the ingredient, the chemical sunscreen oxtenoxate. And, and that is a, a personal choice. My personal choice is I still use it. It has been tested to be safe in the um, cosmetic industry. My dermatologist says that she uses a chemical sunscreen and that the research that she has seen where it potentially could cause issues were using such a large amount of the chemical sunscreen that you could slather your body with it every day for 200 years and still not have that amount that they're applying to the mice in four days. <laughs> so again, it, it, it really depends on your preference, but if you're, you are using a physical sunscreen that is sitting on top of your skin and it can prevent your makeup from adhering to your skin. Having said that, if I do use a physical sunscreen, I have fallen in love with it. It's a new sunscreen by Dermatology. It is their Daydream sunscreen. It is a moisturizer and it is a 18% zinc oxide um, in the sunscreen and you just kind of push this down and you get a little blob of it. This is also the sunscreen that I have right by my door. This is the one I most often use before I go play pickleball. Um, I just do a big squirt and apply it, uh, concentrating on my nose and my hyperpigmentation areas before I run out the door. But you might need to experiment with a different sunscreen. So you might be trying different foundations, but it could be what you're putting underneath your makeup. Um, another reason, back to skincare, if you don't exfoliate your skin, if you don't use any actives, um, glycolic, lactic, um, or mandelic acid on a regular basis, or even your tretinoin if you're using retinols, that just gently lift off that dead skin, that can make it makeup adhere to it, and again, it just sticks heavier. It looks heavier and a lot of time that dead skin are in those fine lines and wrinkles. So you do want to make sure you are exfoliating also because these are the areas where you end up with um, a lot of that dead skin that you need to move. And I, I was doing this, you really don't want to put it up next to your eyes, but you know right here on the orbital bone um, is another area where your dead skin cells can build up. So you do want to um, make sure you are doing really good skincare, paying attention to your skincare. And then, of course, I like to have really moisturized skin. 
most of you know, because I've talked about it before, the Embryo Lease uh, La Creme Concentrate is my favorite makeup primer. This is usually after my skincare. So I normally do my get out shower, do my skincare in the morning, and then it might be 30 minutes, an hour, you know, 40 minutes, maybe even two hours, maybe lunchtime before I am going to go out. So that's when I like to re-moisturize my skin to have that fresh layer because when your skin is plumped up and all your fine lines and wrinkles are plump, when you apply your makeup, it adheres again more closer, adheres better to those areas that when they are deflated or drier, then you might be applying makeup over it and not actually, you know, pushing it into the skin. So skincare, really important. Check out your sunscreen. You might want to try different sunscreens. If you like to wear sunscreen, you might want to try a powder sunscreen that you apply after uh, you do your foundation, but you might want to just look at that. So when we are talking about primers, I usually just prime my skin with the Embryo Lease, but if you are having a lot of trouble with your foundation moving, you might try a gripping primer. I like the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. This does leave your skin a little tacky. Um, it's very similar to, yeah, the Milk Hydro Grip. Though this one, you can see, is more of a liquid, and this one is more of a gel, but they both end up with that gripping feel. Now, this is a water-based primer. I think both of these are water-based primer. But sometimes a silicone-based primer will work better with your silicone-based foundations. And so uh, today I just put on the Revlon Colorstay. It's a primer and base. Now this does have a little bit of sunscreen in it also. I would never depend on this as your sunscreen, just like I wouldn't depend on your foundation uh, as sunscreen, though a lot of people do, unless you're using, you know, one of these almost, almost a moisturizing foundation that has like an SPF 50 or 45 that goes on pretty, pretty heavy. But I do use this if I'm applying over my nose, these areas here where they're most exposed to the sun, especially my nose, you can apply lightly a uh, silicone-based primer. And then here's another tip. You should let that primer sit for at least 60 seconds to fully absorb and kind of set down before you start with your foundation. So a lot of times people will do, you know, one, two, three, apply their primer and immediately start in on their foundation and concealers. Let that set down and you might have a little bit more success without your makeup moving. Also, if you are priming your eyes, put your eyelid primer underneath your eyes too. And so you are going to have to pay attention to what primers you use. Now, this is the Alter Ego Eyeshadow Base. I really like it. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's supposed to be a dupe for something. But maybe, maybe the um, Hourglass uh, Vanish Primer. But I like it because it dries down. It actually has a smoothing. I don't know. It just makes my eyelids and the area feel smoother, softer, smoother, more even. And it dries down but doesn't dry out your skin. So I do like that. It doesn't feel thick or heavy. It almost feels like there's nothing there, but it really does work and hold your eyeshadow in place and also your concealer or foundation. Okay, the third tip to keep your foundation in place is modify how you are applying your foundation, right? So a lot of people have heard, you know, number one reason people's foundations moving is they are applying too much. So you really want to use the smallest amount possible or even skip the foundation altogether. Um, if you just have a little bit of redness right here and you, or maybe just a few spots that you need to cover, you might just need to use a uh, concealer. Now the diff real difference between concealers and foundations, and this one is the Lancome Tint Eye Doll. I don't have here. I also love my Dior Skin Correct Concealer. Uh, this is the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This one's really good to use in lieu of foundation, but concealers usually have more pigment per moisturizing base. So 
you can get more coverage in the areas that you need coverage, but you're actually still using less makeup. So if you just need a little bit of coverage here and there, um, your skin overall is looks pretty good, then you might consider just using just a little bit of concealer and blending it in well. Of course, I have my slew of concealer brushes I love. Um, I do love the Sephora number 57. This one's good for um, wider areas. This is a synthetic concealer. My Refer number 32, this is really good into small areas. Um, really good around the nose. Which other one do I love? Oh, oh yeah. Refer also came out with um, their number 35, which is kind of similar as far as being big. The Sephora one is more flared. This one is more pointed, but it's good a stippling. So the other thing is you don't want to be rubbing off all that pigment. So you really want to be you know, stippling or pressing that concealer in. If you do apply too much though, you can do that wiping motion and then brush it off the excess on a towel to make sure you're not getting too much product. If you're using a color corrector, if you have a lot of dark circles and you've got your color corrector and your concealer and your foundation on top of a primer, that is just a lot of makeup. So if you need that to get the coverage for dark circles, I mean, I don't have dark circles, so I can't really speak to that. You just want to make sure each layer is kind of set down before you apply the next layer. So it may mean waiting a little bit after you put your corrector, or you can mix your corrector in with your concealer and just doing a thin, do a thin layer and see if that works. But you might need to experiment a little bit with some of these other techniques, just doing lighter uh, application. We're still on application. You could also try a different foundation. I know everyone has their favorite foundations usually because it's that perfect shade for you and you like the way your skin feels and you like the way your skin looks. But if it is moving around too much, you might need to switch it up. I love cream foundations, but I find cream foundations require the most prep and setting in order to get them to last a long time and not move around. So um, you might need to, to change it up. Like I talked about the using the foundation with the sunscreen in it, like the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydro Rescue. They're almost like tinted moisturizers, maybe a little bit more coverage, but they have the sunscreen because you're applying a little bit more sunscreen on your face than you might with just a regular one pump uh, foundation. And that might work for you. And then you can skip the sunscreen layer, especially if you're just um, running a few errands and aren't spending an extended period outside. That might work for you. I prefer moving to fuller coverage foundations, but applying them lighter in order to get a more even complexion because again, the more full coverage foundations have more pigment in them, uh, but then um, you want to use that light hand so it's not too thick. Uh, another thing that you can do if you are moving to a more full covered foundation and it's too thick for you, um, is add a drop of serum. Mix it in with serum on the back of your hand. Um, I do that with a lot of my more matte foundations. The, like the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear. This one is a really long lasting foundation and I can mix it with a little bit of serum, get a lighter application and I still, it still will last a long time. Other medium, sorry, my, my towel's on the floor. Other medium coverage foundations that I love and you know, if you've watched any of my foundation videos, you know I talk about these all the time. Of course, my um, number one foundation is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Again, I mentioned this before, I think they have reformulated it. I used to always have to mix it with a serum. I don't now, and it goes on beautifully. Love the L'Oreal True Match. I hear they reformulated it, but I looked for the new one with the pump in my local drugstore, and they still were carrying this bottle my Dior. Uh, this one is the matte. Um, if you have drier skin, you can do the Forever Glow. Uh, what I'm wearing today is the NARS um, Light Reflecting Foundation. I'm going to have all of my shades. I, hopefully, I'll put them in, in the bar and also down below. 
My new favorite daily foundation that I've been wearing a lot of is my the Makeup on Mario foundation. The reason I like this one, it is really sheer. It is very lightweight. So whereas these foundations, you know, I can almost feel a little bit of foundation, especially again, if I put it on too heavy, I will put a dab on back of my hand and blend it out with a makeup brush. And I tried a different makeup brush. I've always used the BK Beauty 101, but I know Lisa, who founded the company BK Beauty, she likes the 106, so I tried the 106 today. And I do like it too, especially for just shearing out and not using a whole lot of product. Um, I think it works really well. But those are just some suggested foundations that I like that are more medium to full coverage, and then you can use them very light. And that's what I have on now. I don't feel like it looks like I have any sort of heavy foundation look, but it's because I applied them really lightly. Oh, another thing to check if your foundation is moving too much is, is your foundation too old? Um, <laughs> I hate to say, you know, when your foundation gets half a bottle, three quarters of a bottle, it might be time to repurchase a new foundation. But as you, as your foundation goes down and you get more air in your bottle, that can thicken the foundation, um, which can make it look heavy. The other solution would be mix it with a little bit of, mix it with a drop of a serum to help thin it out again. But you do want to check, um, the age of your foundation. Now, of course, I have about a hundred foundations all purchased in the last two, two and a half years. Most of them, um, I would say 98% of them, maybe even 99 were purchased. Um, so I don't want to throw them out. I mean, I've got thousands of dollars of foundation that I've purchased because they are all mostly full. They don't seem to go bad as fast because you're not getting air in it. So not, any different than it just sitting, you know, on a shelf at the drugstore or the store before you buy it. But again, as you use the foundation and you get more air in it, you might notice a change and that could be a reason. Okay. And tip number five is setting your foundation, setting your makeup. Makeup artists pretty much universally will say using a setting powder is going to be the best way to set your makeup. Now I have done lots of videos on how to get your makeup to last all day and I do a series of powders and setting sprays and all that. That also can help your makeup from moving into your fine lines and wrinkles. You can put just a little bit of setting spray after your foundation before the rest of your makeup on a sponge and kind of press it into um, those fine lines and wrinkles. Now Sometimes I'll get it too high up here. You know, this might be an area where you're getting your the makeup shifting, but normally I find it's shifting in this area. The setting sprays can be drying, and so if your skin is drying out, that will make your fine lines and wrinkles more noticeable, which will make it look like your makeup is moving more into those uh, areas. So you do want to make sure you're not drying out your skin. And the matters, mattifying setting sprays can do that, but I also think they set the best. So it's that kind of double-edged sword. So I was using this um, Sephora makeup setting spray. It's their 16-hour wear. I love, um, gosh, L'Oreal Infallible has one. Um, I think pretty much every makeup brand has a strong setting spray. Elf has one that I like. And this is their Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Spray. And then I will put the rest of my makeup on and then I will set with a little bit of powder. And lately, instead of using a big fluffy powder brush and putting it all over the place, I have been pressing the powder in. I've actually been using the Wayne Goss, but it's wet. <laughs> I just washed it. Um, the Wayne Goss Pop. It has a little piece of foam in it. The Beauty Blender also has a piece of foam in it. I don't know if that really does anything, but you can get little inexpensive powder puffs also on Amazon but you dip it into your powder. The Wayne Goss weightless powder is super fine. This is 
really, really lovely. The RCMA one, and it's $14 for this huge canister of the RCMA. You can buy it on Beautylish. This is their original no color powder. This is what I use the most um, to set, and I use these ultra fine ones to finish. ELF has their Halo Glow setting powder, which is also ultra, ultra fine. There are a lot of good powders out there, but how you apply it is kind of key. So I will tap a little bit in onto my sponge, which will give you too much. So then I tap it, the excess off on a towel, and then I kind of press it in. If it still feels too much, then I'll take a clean brush. Actually, I think I was using uh, this one. It's a BK Beauty brush. This is their 113. Um, it's, it's a pretty dense brush and actually really work that setting powder off because I don't want too much. Also, you can just take it from the lid so you just have the smallest amount and pat on. So there are different ways you can use your setting powder to set the makeup, but um, I've been using the sponge and really pressing it in and then brushing off the excess. And then, because I don't like that flatter powdered look all the time, um, I will use a setting spray on top. And the Morphe Continuous Mist, it's really light. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, they're very light, but bring my skin back to that natural finish. I don't like using one of the more matte setting sprays as my final setting spray because I feel like it makes my skin look dry. Now, after I've done all this, if I've overdone it, let's say you've done your makeup and you're like, oh, my face is feeling really tight. And you, you know, you're looking in the mirror and it's looking really dry. I will actually take just a little bit of my moisturizer and kind of just re-pat it on top. Now, this is also what I do if I have a full face of makeup and didn't realize I was gonna be spending some time outdoors, I will take my sunscreen and do the same thing and pat it on top and give it you know, 15 minutes to set down. But that's it, those are my five tips for getting your makeup or preventing your makeup from moving into your fine lines and wrinkles. Um, there is a little bit of experimentation and unfortunately sometimes it just happens. Um, just some, especially if you have more oily skin, it's harder to um, get the makeup to adhere really well to your skin and you can just, you know, press those areas with your finger, kind of warm them up and lift off that excess makeup. Um, but Sometimes it may still happen. It is makeup and our faces do move. But I would try some of these tips, mix and match, see what works best for you. Let me know down in the comments below what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.